Hello and welcome back to the American Ultra Stock channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new around here, stick around. We have some co content coming up that may be really exciting for you guys. Today we're doing the depth chart series where we analyze the top 10 best players position by position. We have the best roster, I think the best pool that we ever had. So straight to the point, today we're doing the wingers. And Brayden, who's the 10th best winger that you think we have available on our pool? So for number 10, uh, I don't know if this guy is necessarily our top top 10 best right now, but I'm kind of banking on the potential here. And I think his potential is one of the highest we've seen of, of a player shown at least uh, in, in the last uh, year or so. Esmir Bayraktarovic, the Bosnian dual national from the New England Revolution. He's kind of burst onto the scene this year, made his USONT uh, debut uh, in Camp Cupcake and Meg the Defender with his first touch and since then it, it's been all positives for him. He hasn't played as much as I nearly would like for the Revs. I think he should be a starter week in week out. He's getting decent minutes, uh, especially in the CONCACAF Champions Cup actually in their little run there uh, to like the round of 16 I think it was. He got a goal and three assists showing his quality. Still yet to, to break through an MLS this season but it, it's a matter of time. He's also playing for one of the worst teams if not the worst in the entire league, I think it's fair to say. The Revs have been horrible this year. And maybe if he was playing 90 minutes every week, they'd be better. I think we've see, all seen the potential that he has and, and the quality in the Olympic camps in particular. He was the only player before this season included in the Olympic camps that wasn't playing at a senior team level. When he first was included, he was playing with the Revolution 2 mainly. Uh, and I, I'll admit I had some concerns about whether he was at the level or not. He quickly proved me wrong. It's definitely one of the best players in that Olympic group. I think he's going to be key if he does end up making the final roster. There's a chance he doesn't just to keep him with the U20 group because he is still eligible for that. And I think if he does end up playing at the U20 World Cup next year, he'll be by far our best player in that squad. But for now, I'm going to put him at number 10 with the potential for him to quickly rise up the rankings in the next coming years. Nice, nice. I completely agree with you. I think his club situation sucks because of the club that he's in. But this is a really tough, uh, I'm just going to start out by saying this is a tough one for me to pick. I think we have more wing depth than I initially thought when I was putting up this top 10. First one right here, I know you're a huge fan of him, Brayden. I'm putting Kate Cowell on my top 10. And I'm going <laughs> to... I'm gonna say it's uh, not solely on the physicality, but I, I like how direct Cal is. He really is a direct player, very incisive on the ball. And I think that he has the physical attributes. He's more of an athlete than a player, uh, granted. And his shooting is really off. I mean, we've seen it even at the U20 World Cup where some people thought he had a great competition. I don't think so. Thought the shooting, he needed like five or six chances to get one okay, reasonable miss. The other ones would be crazy and wouldn't score. But I do think that there's a player in there. I think that there's a mentality there. He's still young. I think that he should get a move to Europe at some point in his career. Do I really think he's ever going to be 18 quality? No, that's why I'm placing him on 10. But I think that he's a player that can be a solid Gold Cup player. I think that he has the physical attributes. If he was only a little bit more skillful and had better finishing, it could be a completely different story. But that's what I have starting off my top 10. Now moving on to the ninth position, Brayden. For number nine, uh, I think this is actually a good time to remind people because I don't think we have yet this video or maybe even in the last one. We are picking each player for only one position. Uh, we know there's a lot of players in the pool that are versatile, can play at multiple spots, especially when you get to the wingers. There are a lot that can play in the midfield as well, a couple that can maybe play striker too. But ultimately, we're each deciding uh, for our own criteria to pick uh, players in one specific position so there isn't any overlap and so we can really highlight all of the depth that we do have. Uh, and I'm saying that because at number nine, I'm gonna pick a player that uh, you had, Yuri, in the, the CAMS group. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, guys, go watch that. Our top 10 CAMS came out last week. Uh, but I'm gonna pick Taylor Booth here. I think you had him around six or so in the, for the tens. Uh, I'm going to pick him nine for the wingers. And I will say, if he had stayed injury-free this season, he'd probably be four to five spots higher on my list. But unfortunately, this year hasn't gone according to plan. He was out uh, pretty early on in the season with a, a decently long-term injury. Came back, had a really good run of form, showed what he can be, his his potential and his quality that he ended up showing last season with a, a crazy run. I think it was five goals in two games uh, within a, a, a week span, uh, including a hat trick against his brother, which is always a nice moment to, to have. But he ended up getting injured again. He did just come back actually this past weekend, uh, I think it was. Uh, for uh, his for the first time in a month or so, 
uh, but actually two months, uh, sorry, but uh, the injury concerns are there and it, it, it was looking like before he got injured in the first place initially to start the year, it was looking like he'd be the number one player uh, for the Olympic team uh, at the winger position or in the midfield, wherever he ends up playing. But I, I do think that due to his injuries, he's been set back a lot. Other players have overtaken him, as you'll see later down my list. There's some other Olympic eligible players that have, I think have surpassed him just for now. But if he can stay injury free uh, and get back to his the form that we know he can hit next season, then he'll probably be a little bit higher up the list. Absolutely. It's such a shame. I think that he had one of the most unfortunate seasons out of any Americans, really. Uh, moving on to the ninth position. Again, this is a player that I don't know if you have on your list. I have Carmen De La Fuente. I know that he is a, basically a failed uh, star that could have been. Uh, a lot of people had him. A really high hopes for him at some point. But I feel like he's still young. He's still at an age where he could have a comeback. I think yeah, he has the talent. And I see that you're really puzzled. I was puzzled to include him here. Uh, he was, quite frankly, when I was mounting up, up together the the top 10 players, I didn't even consider him. But I think that at some point down the line, Carlos De La Fente is going to have a renaissance like I expect Zach Steffen to have at some point. These wonder kids that basically failed, but I really have him right here in ninth spot. Not really going to touch the A team anytime soon. Not even going to touch the Gold Cup squad anytime soon because I feel like the players that are ahead of him on this list are ahead by quite a mile. Now, moving on to your next pick, Braden. Uh, a bit interesting to see him over Cowell, but I, I respect it, as you guys might know. Number one Cowell hater uh, right here. But moving on to number eight, and it's such a big contrast from what you said, because I'm going to pick a player who's been starting consistently in a top five league in the Bundesliga. Uh, Kevin Paredes is uh, going to be my number eight. And I, I think that he definitely has an argument to be higher. He has been included uh, in an A-team camp back uh, for the Trinidad and Tobago games. I don't think he was that impressive in that camp, but he is still such a young player. I uh, just uh, turned 21 years of age, actually, uh, the day before we recorded this. So happy belated birthday to, to Kevin. But I think he's going to be crucial at the Olympics. Uh, hopefully he is in that competition and doesn't get a spot wasted in the Copa America roster because it is possible, but I think it's better for him and a lot of the Olympic eligible players to ultimately go and play a key role in uh, just an important tournament instead of wasting away on the bench with the A team. It's good to get some experience with the senior team, but that can come later down the line. There, there's an important competition to potentially get win or, or place, at least get a medal in. I think Paredes will be key for that. I will say in the last Olympic camp, the only one he was actually included in, I believe, he didn't look that great, uh, which is why I think I have him maybe one spot lower than he should be based on merit. I just think that a, another player who you'll see at number seven has been performing better at, as of late and especially for the national team in that U23 group. So I'm going to have him for eight now, but starting in the Bundesliga basically every week is an incredible achievement for someone so young. He's broken into a Wolfsburg team, a huge club in Germany, and I expect him to just keep doing great things. Absolutely. Now, looking at your first picks and at mine, I think that the fact that I put Taylor Booth and Alex Zendejas on other positions really hurt mine because in the eighth spot, I'm going to have Emmanuel Sabi. I think that Sabi has had a he had a little spell in January where people thought, oh, maybe he is worthy of a call up, but I think that it's back down to earth now. The Havre, the entire form has gone down. The club is not in the situation that they were finding themselves having a respectable season. They are struggling. I think that it's still a good jump in quality that he made of playing and he can say he plays in a top five league, take it for granted, uh, take for what you will. It's the French league, but I think that he had a good season, respectable season, has some good moments. I think I like, again, a very direct player. Maybe uh, the club that he's playing in is not holding him back, but he doesn't really get that many opportunities. They are a very defensively minded team and uh, they don't really favor any attackers. So. I have Savvy there because I think he's going to get a call up at some point. Someone uh, is going to get injured. He always has players getting injured. And if Greg tries to play around with the roster, this is the type of guy I wouldn't mind having at a, at a Gold Cup. It's a good opportunity for him to get minutes. I think it raises the floor in terms of talent compared to some MLS lifers. But yeah, the last of the ones that I think won't really feature in our main team is my eighth spot. Now moving on to your next player, Braden. Uh, I was hoping Sabi would get a mention uh, because I do think he is in our top 10 best. I just decided to leave him out due to 
the potential that some other players like Esmir have. But like you said, playing in a top five league starting week in, week out, regardless of it being a uh, Liga or the, the quality of the team, it's still a great achievement, especially for someone who just came from Denmark. It's such a huge jump to make. I think he's done really well for himself considering that. Uh, but moving on to my number seven, uh, I kind of alluded to it when I was talking about Kevin Paredes. It's going to be Griffin Yao, the player who's burst onto the scene with Westerlo this season. Uh, he's a very unique player because when he was in MLS with DC, he didn't really get many opportunities. He was kind of juggled between the first team and uh, their USL affiliate, Loudon. Uh, and he b decided to gamble on himself, moved to Westerlo. Last year, he didn't really feature too much. But this season, he's fought for his place and, and won it, deservedly so. I think he's one of the best players in that team. Although, granted, not the highest level team, but he's been so good in Belgium this year. Seven goals, five assists, breaking 10 goal contributions uh, for the first time, shattering his previous record of three in a season that came uh, in the USL. So just really an incredible and unprecedented jump that Griffin has taken. And like I mentioned, I think he's overtaken Paredes even because for the U23, he, him and Paredes are in the same situation. They both were only included in that one camp, the most recent one. And whereas Paredes struggled, Yao came in and looked like the best player there. I think in one camp, maybe even just one game, he single-handedly cemented his spot not only on the plane to Paris, but potentially as a starter there. I think he's been so key. And like I said, it's been such an unexpected burst onto the scene, but I'm here for it. Hopefully he can get a move to a slightly bigger club in the summer because I think he could ball out at one of the higher level clubs in Belgium before, who knows, maybe he has a top five league in his future. His potential, I wouldn't say, is as high as some of the other players I have below him, but for right now, I'd definitely put him at number seven. Absolutely. Now moving on to my number seven, a uh, player that you already mentioned on the list. Again, I'm picking this one. This one really is solely on potential and on the ceiling because I think that he could be a really, really special player. It's going to be Esmer Bajraktarevic. I thought he was really good. Again, I'll use that French game as a sample. I thought he really could have scored a goal there. Didn't look afraid at all. The guy has a good mentality on him. Uh, just tries to go forward very direct and really could have scored. If he had scored in that game, he would have made some headlines. I thought he didn't look out of place, didn't look out of place at all when he played at the Olympic squad. So uh, I, I hope that his club situation gets a little bit better. He has a, an European passport, so there's always that to facilitate a move to Europe. Hopefully he has a better second half of the season, gets himself a move in January. I think that in the future he will be able to have some shots for the A team. I hope so because I think that there's a lot of talent. If he puts a little bit of muscle mass in him, I think that the raw talent that we have right there is insane, really. So moving on to the sixth position, we are getting a little bit closer to the top five, Braden. Yeah, so at number six, I have a bit of a, a, a unique tier here. Uh, from seven to ten, I basically had the Olympic team uh, players, uh, the Olympic eligible players. At number six, I have a player who's surpassed that level uh, due to age and his quality, but I don't think he's just at the national team level just yet. Uh, and you already mentioned him. He was in your, your center mid group, I believe. Uh, it's going to be Alejandro Zendejas playing for Club America. I think he's come into really good form over the last couple of months. He had a spell in March of four games where he scored four goals and three assists uh, over four games. That is incredible. And then one game later, he goes back on a streak of three goals in three games. I think he's been so good. Uh, instrumental in their run to the CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, semifinals. Unfortunately, they ended up losing there, but five goals and two assists in that run. Very impressive over the Clausada and uh, Apertura combined. Uh, he has nine goals, six assists in Liga Mekis, but a lot of those have been recently uh, in the, the recent competition in Clausura. So I think he's hitting his form at the perfect time. And with rumors that the Copa America roster could be at 26, I think there is an outside chance that he does make that roster. We already know the connection he has with some of the players. Uh, and he's, he's in the form of his life right now, to be honest. So I think just because of his form and... He's playing at a pretty high level. Club America are a very respectable team uh, in world football, despite playing in CONCACAF. So I think he deserves number six. Absolutely. I think he'd find himself around that spot if I had picked him for the wingers. But again, I picked him for the, C the center mids because I think that at the top level, that's where his game will translate. But great shout. Talking about players that will find themselves wearing USMNT jerseys during the summer. My next pick, you already uh, mentioned him. It's going to be Kevin Paredes. I think that he is, a, uh, at some point, he was a lot closer to the A-team than he, he is now. 
And uh, again, that game against France is still too fresh in my mind for me to put him above on this list. I think it's still a great season for him. I think maybe it was a little bit uh, underwhelming compared to the way that he finished the season last year. I had some really high hopes for this year, but it's it's fine. The guy is all really young still, so still acclimating to that position. The club as well is so talented. It's tough for him to break into that Wolfsburg squad and be a cemented starter. but. Again, a lot of talent for Paredes, great player there, but not quite enough to make to my top five, but it only shows how much, how far we've come, really. So now top five is here, Braden. Who do you have starting it out for us? Uh, number five, I'm going to have a pretty controversial one because I think a lot of people have him higher, and I'll admit I had him uh, in the top two heading into the season, but it's going to be Tim Weah. I, I think he's fallen off significantly this season. It's been a very dis disappointing year at Juventus, and I think everyone is starting to slowly realize that Wea doesn't actually have a position for national team he plays uh, as a winger for club he kind of plays a wing back but even at Lille he bounced around started out as a winger lost his spot due to poor performances and deservedly so ended up playing left back and right back did I guess enough to get the Juventus move in all honesty I don't know if he deserved that big of a step up due to the season he had last year uh, and it showed this year a uh, very limited game time he does feature in almost every game but a lot of it is in limited roles off the bench. He has started consistently. Uh, he started three of their last uh, four games now, which is a nice thing to see towards the end of the season, getting a little bit of trust. But who knows if that's going to last. Allegri, their manager, is probably leaving in the summer. And if a new manager comes in, there's a very good chance why it isn't in their plans and he ends up getting sold, which honestly could be good for his career. He could go somewhere where he could actually play winger, where he's supposed to be with the national team instead of as a wing back, and finally discover his, his true position. But I think just on the basis of this season, I think other players have emerged in front of him. So he's going to be at number five. But with the emphasis that if he gets back into form next season, he'll definitely be back up towards number two. All right. Some good arguments there for your pick. Definitely a controversial one. For me, top five, I'm starting with the player that you mentioned. Similar pattern right there. You also had him above parade is going to be Griffin Yao. And a lot of this is due to how much I've watched of him and how impressed I am. I think Yao is an amazing player, really, really good player. Uh, I saw an interview that was released today where he said that he, he has the mindset that this is not enough. Still, he's happy that he bounced back in his career. There were moments where he would be stuck in, inside his car, questioning if this was even worth it. He wasn't getting any minutes. He was asked to go to USL, score that first goal for Loden uh, United, had their first goal ever. And then went to Belgium, tried his luck in Europe, and well, his team was uh, in the relegation zone when he started playing back in December. And then now they find themselves completely safe playing in that crazy group format that Belgium has, and he has done really well there. I think that he, you can say that he was the player that really was the catalyst for change, really, in their starting lineup. Guy's not afraid of anyone, really, really silky player, technical player, not afraid to take a shot with both feet. I, I am hugely impressed with him, and I think that the Olympic, uh, I hope that he stays injury-free, gets to play there. I think he could be one of our main players, and he's going to definitely be on the move. Maybe, if not next season, the, the one after, and I agree with him. I think he will be in contention for a spot in the 26 World Cup, so rooting for him. Extremely impressed with the season. Hopefully, he keeps it up, because now I think the stakes are high for him moving on to next season. Which brings us to the fourth spot, and I would like to ask you as well before you mention him, on the fourth spot, would you call this player to to the main roster on a Twix 26 men roster? I 100% would call this player up. And, and at number four, this is going to be another controversial one because I know a lot of the fan base likes to hate on him. But I'm going to pick Brendan Aronson. And let me just quickly explain my reasoning here because I, I know a lot of people are going to say, and rightly so, you can't have him over Wea. And I agree. I think as a player, if we were going to pick a starter, I would 100% go for Wea. But as the number four spot on this list, this player is undoubtedly going to be coming off the bench as a super sub. And I think that's Brendan's perfect role. You see the energy and tenacity that he brings to a game, uh, a lot of the skill as well. He's never afraid to take on players, often beats them. You've seen it at Union Berlin recently. He, he's so fearless, always taking on defenders, usually a, a big spark of offense whenever he does come off the bench. Uh, we saw it even in their last game over the weekend, came on at halftime, completely changed the game. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't end up getting the win, but that was due to the first half performance. I think he's a better super sub than Wea. Like I said, Wea's positioning is a little iffy if he was to come on as a sub. 
who's to say it would even be as a winger, especially with Dest out right now. I think there's a, a re very real argument that Waya could be even moved to the right back depth chart to challenge Scali because after Scali, it's basically uh, it's a really bad situation. Let's be honest. And even Scali hasn't really has inspired a lot of confidence in a lot of people, me included. So I, I'm, I, I'm going to pick Aronson ahead of Waya here. Just based on that reasoning, I think he's a better super sub uh, and number four. And I think despite maybe he's had a little bit of a disappointing season, especially the first half, but I think it has been better than Waya overall. I think especially recently he's been he's been turning it up. So I'm going to have him at number four. And I also have Brandon Harrison at number four. I agree with you. And I'm a little bit, uh, again, regretting my decisions here. I, I see his best position as the 10. And I think, again, I agree with you. He's relentless, the work rate. I like how much passion he shows for our country. And I agree with your take. I think that if, uh, based on the merit that they have the fourth spot right here, is likely going to be included as a super sub, I think he's the best super sub we can have, period. Not only on this depth chart. I think, again, very versatile player that can play anywhere in the midfield. Really rate him. I think that he had a, a very silent comeback of a season. A lot of people were really quick to point the finger when he was doing uh, having a bad season, not having any goal contributions. Now that he's doing well, I don't see anybody talking about it, which is a little unfair. There is that stigma that he's weak. But if you look at his uh, duels, one percentage, it's actually crazy. Uh, you would think that he's a defensive midfielder, really good in that uh, aspect. Watching the game, obviously uh, not the strongest, but again, a very good player tenacious with a lot of relentless uh, work rate so i have him in fourth as well which moves us to our top three brayden yeah i will just say quickly i, I also regret not putting him in the tens because i do think that is his best position but we do see with the national team he always plays winger so it's only fair and that's why i had taylor booth in this position group as well even though it's the same situation i think in the long run he's a midfielder uh but moving on to the top three and i have a player that you might not have just because he's not really a usmnt player uh, it's gonna be luca Coliosho. show i think right now he's very committed to italy and understandably so if he uh ends up committing to, to italy then he'll obviously come off the depth chart but i think on his day he's been injured for a lot of the season so i think people have kind of forgotten about him but he was one of Burnley's only bright spots early in the season. I thought he showed a lot of quality and especially making the jump from barely even playing for Espanyol. He only played five games for them last season, did end up scoring his first uh, La Liga goal, which was a nice sight. But if he had stayed there, he would have been playing probably consistently, but in the second division uh, in Spain and La Liga too. And making the move to Burnley, very ambitious and, and it paid off. Uh, when he was healthy, he was starting basically every game, 13 starts out of 15 games in the Premier League. A goal and an assist, uh, and it, it could have been more, honestly, if some of his teammates have finished chances or himself, he had a couple of good chances that he probably should have finished. I think he showed uh, an ability to get into the right areas. I think he had a lot of highlight reels as well. He beat a lot of good defenders that maybe he shouldn't be beating. So I'm going to put him at number three. I, I think if he does end up committing, he instantly moved into the conversation to be a starter, which is kind of crazy to say, considering that this guy was basically a Canada lock a year or two ago, just because he didn't, he wasn't seen to have the quality for the US or especially Italy. Honestly, I don't think Italy think he has the quality now, seeing as he can't even get a game for the U21s against San Marino. But that is what it is. He's going to stick with his blind faith in Italy for now. And when he eventually turns to the right side and picks the USMNT, I'll be waiting with open arms. All right. I don't, I don't know if I have that many kind words for Luca. I think it's absolutely insane that he's trying to be Italian. I, I've never seen him speak Italian, but I'm assuming that he probably doesn't. And uh, well, anyways, moving on to my top three. Uh, it's a guy that you already mentioned. It's Tim Weah. I have him here because I think that as a winger, I, I don't know. I don't know if he even is a winger, but let's remind ourselves as well that two years ago when we had that drought for a number nine and some people pointed to him as possibly being converted to a striker. The guy really has been everywhere. Uh, I mean, right back, left back, right wing back, right winger. But I think that as a winger, he can really flourish for the national team. For the most part, he always delivers. But I agree with you. I think it's a really, really bad season uh, that he had. I think it's, I might think that it's one of the worst for an American. I know that the jump to Juventus sounds nice on paper, but I think that ultimately the fact that he's not between, well, a lock for number one or two shows how much he has fallen because everyone, myself included, rates him really high. I think that there's a really special player in there, but uh, it definitely doesn't break my top two as of now, which makes us uh, go to the jump. Second spot, Brayden, who is it? 
I think based on the way it's panned out, we're going to have the top two, which uh, it seems to be the the usual occurrence based on these depth chart videos, uh, because I think they kind of pick themselves. But number two, speaking of that, it's kind of uh, the opposite, actually, because it's a player who wouldn't even be considered in this position group, let alone even in the top 10 uh, at the start of the season. I'm going to have Haji right here from Coventry City. I think a lot of people saw him as a striker, and rightly so. He was there at the World Cup as a striker when he was playing for Antalya Sport uh, in, in the Super League in Turkey. But made the move to Coventry, he had a bit of a slow start, as did the entire club. But I think we, it's, that's kind of how their club works, honestly, because I remember last season, too. They were really bad at the start of the year, ended up making it all the way to the playoff final. Probably should have won, I would say. It had a very real chance to be in the Premier League, and that would have been crazy to see Haji potentially in the Premier League. Uh, but I think he had a really good season. It speaks for itself, really. 19 goals, 7 assists in all competition, and the clutch gene as well. We saw so many times in the FA Cup, the game winner against Wolves in stoppage time, the penalty against Man United to send it to extra time, and then converting his penalty in the shootout as well. I think he has the clutch gene, which is a big thing. And for the U.S. men's national team as well, coming off the bench against Jamaica and scoring two in extra time to give us the win, he just shows that he can come up in the biggest of moments. And I mean, a lot of people like to hate on him for it, but he did score our only goal against the Netherlands in the knockout stages. I mean, how many people can say they've scored in a World Cup knockout stage? And despite, let's be honest, that goal was a lot of luck and people would like to clown on him for it. But it's still an incredible achievement coming up in the biggest occasions, like I said. And I, I would personally start him. I've said this many times in the past. I'd start him at the Copa America on the left wing. I think he's earned it based on the season. It'd be nice to see him maybe do it in a top five league. We'll see if he gets a move this summer. I think he's deserving of one, but staying at Coventry is definitely not a bad option either. They should be one of the favorites to at least make the playoffs next season if they maintain most of their squad. I'm very excited to see how he does this summer. He should be in the Copa America team, especially if it is a 26-man roster. And next season too, I think Haji, he's already 26, which is old for our player pool, which is kind of crazy to be honest, but he's just going to be entering the prime of his career and he has so many good years ahead of him still. Absolutely. I also have him in second spot. Tremendous season for Haji. So happy for him and so happy for us to have a player like him emerge out of nowhere, really not out of nowhere, but definitely raised the ceiling of where we thought his talent was and really nice. I think that he should, uh, should get a move during the summer. Not much left to say. I think that Haji has surprised everyone and congrats to him, really. I think that he could find himself in the Prem next season and that's crazy. So congrats, Haji. I hope that he starts in the Copa America as well. Uh, moving on to the top position, Braden, who is it? I'll make this quick because I think this is one of the most obvious number ones we have at any position. It's probably our best player, Captain America, Christian Pulisic. The signing of the season, I'll go as far to say, in Serie A this year for AC Milan in a very disappointing season for them. He's been one of the main bright spots. 13 goals, 9 assists in all, uh, in all competitions in his first season at the Italian Giants, making the move from Chelsea where he only had 3 goal contributions last year. A huge uh, step up uh, in his quality of the game. You can see he's really enjoying his life again uh, and his football, which is always nice to see. I mean, I think it was obvious at Chelsea he was playing out of position. He wasn't really enjoying himself uh, towards the end of his tenure, although he was important, uh, crucial actually, I will say, in that Champions League run, uh, which was probably the best we've ever seen Pulisic. And lockdown Pulisic at Chelsea, the streets will never forget. Even not in, not even in America, everyone, all real Premier League fans, remember him for that. But I think he's been so good in Serie A this season and going into next year with probably a better manager. I mean, you can't really get worse than Pioli. And a second year, having adapted to the club and the league already, I expect even bigger, bigger and better things. And we already know what he does for the national team. He's going to be crucial in Copa America. Absolutely. I also have him a number one. I mean, not much left to say. Again, Captain America himself should probably lead us to to a great campaign in Copa America. Hopefully, hopefully we punch above our weight. And I think it's so nice. I'm just going to mention the fact that he stayed, for the most part, injury-free. A uh, little knock here and there. Good uh, minutes. Uh, well, management, really. It comes to the word of management by Milan. And he avoided, stayed injury-free. And I'm really, really happy about that. Seems to be on a high, really confident. And that's all we need, really. So now leave a comment down below what you thought about our takes, what you thought about the placement of the players that we chose on this list. A lot of depth there that 
frankly, we might go insane. So let us know if you agree with us. Uh, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned because next time we're going to be bringing to you guys the top 10 best strikers that we have. A lot of talk about that one as well. So we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.